My name is Jasta Rantala. I'm working as a country manager for Sophos in Finland and Baltics. And today's agenda is to talk a little bit about the managed detection and response services. So first of all, I think it's always good to start from the definition that we are on the same page, what we are talking about today. So this is basically our definition for the MDR. Fully managed 24-7 service delivered by experts who specialize in detecting and responding to cyber attacks that technology solution alone cannot prevent. And I think this is really good definition. It's short, it's understandable, and it gives quite good picture about what we are doing here and talking about this. And <clears throat> so like then what I would like to start to talk about is a little bit that like how the market around these services is doing, well, well, which direction they are going to take, or at least we are guessing that they are going to take, a little bit why we are moving on that direction, and what is the actual offering, what Sophos has for this, for this, how would I say, is it threat or opportunity, but anyway. So first, like, I see this Gartner publishing quite interesting, interesting statement that by 2025, 50% of organization will be using MDR services. And that's quite strong statement if we think that where we are now and we are far away from that. And I have been thinking quite a lot about this, that is this possible? Is this going to happen in Finland? Is this going to happen in Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia? And if it would, so why it would happen? And obviously there are plenty of reasons which will drive this development. But I think basically based on the discussions what I have had with our customers and partners and distributors and my colleagues in different countries, it's usually a few things what will pop up on those discussions. And one of them is obviously the complexity. And the other one is the resources. So like a few different scenarios, some of the companies might have really skillful employees, even their own dedicated security teams, but then they don't necessarily have the time. Or more typical problem is that like customers want to hire people or our partners want to hire cybersecurity specialists. But at the moment, it's pretty much mission impossible to find those. And even though if you find few of those, it might be that they will change the company quite soon because there is, how would I say, the heat in the market is actually really high at the moment. So there is, some, how would I say, really urgent demand for these type of persons. And, and this will make it quite tricky that like from customer point of view, if you are considering starting to build your own SOC, so where do you find the people, how you will keep them, and how many people do you need if you want to run 24-7 service by yourself? So it's not like how would I say, it's not possible to run 24 seven with three persons. It's like more likely that we are talking about maybe even 10 persons. And then if you start to calculate the cost for 10 persons, so it's relatively high. And obviously the same thing, it's related to our business partners that like they need to have the business case that they can provide for you cost efficient services. And that will be probably like those those few things will be the key drivers, key drivers for the market to move forward. And I think definitely it's the right direction. And then we will take a quick poll, just get a little bit your opinion about the current situation. So yeah, so I will read out the question because it's easier for me than for Yaska. So yeah, the question is: Are you planning to implement or procure SOC? or SOC services in 2023. So please give us your votes. And we'll wait a bit. And then Yasa could make a little comment uh, how yeah. it maybe reflects other regions he's yeah. participating in. Yeah. 
yeah, it's interesting to see here what kind of results we will get, because usually it's pretty much the same in every region. Every region that these like customers have noticed that they need some help. It's not just about buying technology. We need to have someone skillful enough to run those technologies and have the have the time time to do that. So have we polius get any results? Yeah, so I think we, we got quite a few already. So I, I will FYI it's a bit different than mm -hmm. Gartner predicts, at least for the Baltic region. So I'm sharing the results. So yeah, you should see them. Yes. So okay. Yeah, it's actually quite interesting. I see that 70 percentage have been considering to run the SOC services and 83 percent is, is still, how would I say, maybe like thinking that others really need it or, or is it something that customers are not fully aware of that what you can actually achieve by running SOC services. So yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think that still, like, if we are comparing this to Gartner, so here we are talking about the next three years. So now, basically, these MDR services are starting to ramp up. And for example, this solution, what we are today talking about here, basically will be officially launched in two weeks. So we are talking about relatively new stuff still here. But yeah, thank you for your replies. Let's continue. Okay. So yeah, like I was referring previously, cybersecurity has become too complex for most of the organization to manage effectively. And this is the key driver here, like in IT, IT business overall. So we have always been like really technology oriented and we have been selling and buying different kinds of technologies to solve different problems and so on. But with this, how would I say, MDR case and the expected growth, there is basically no, no that like fancy driver for that. It's actually quite easy driver. I think the biggest driver is the complexity. And you all has, have probably been seeing that, especially now when the situation in the world is quite tricky. We see a lot of cyber attacks coming from different places. So it needs to be like, how would I say, you need to have a new type of tools, new type of processes, new type of knowledge to be secure. So this is the one of the key drivers here. Then a little bit about the, our concept, cybersecurity as a service, and those like, how would I say, key, key points that why we are doing this or why you should consider it. So like, in the end of the day, it's all about risk. I think that the everything related to the cybersecurity, it's it's all about risk. How we how much risk can we take? What's the price for the risk? How would I say? And like it's like insurances that like, do you want to have insurance for your car? Even though you are a good driver, there are still many things what can happen. Or do you want to maybe have some uh, healthcare, healthcare insurance, whatever? There is plenty of different type of insurances, but this like investing on cybersecurity stuff, I think that's pretty much same type of thing than insurances. You do things, you invest on things, and the reason is that you want to put your risk on the lower level, lower level, and then you're comparing the cost to the things what you can achieve and that's pretty much what it's all about in mdr services to put your risk level way lower and then obviously we get greater efficiency like if we compare for example you running your own SOC, finding your own employees train them try to keep them working for you like we have this global service we have at the moment we have six different SOC centers around the globe working 24 7 for you so obviously that creates greater efficiency and if we think about like the all the telemetry data what we are collecting around the world so we have like 
the visibility what we have it's huge and it gives us much more better understanding than for example some company who is building their own SOAP who doesn't have that type of visibility on the happenings global level obviously they will have the visibility to, for the events on their own environment but the global level level is always I would say benefiting us because like when we see that something starts to happen for example in Asia or USA so eventually it will happen here as well and like always greater efficiency means lower costs in the end of the day and and that's the thing what matters like as fun as it is to invest on cybersecurity, it's still all about the costs like the main thing is that you are running your own business and the purpose of running businesses is usually to make some money and then the cybersecurity stuff it's always like there is always cost related on those so we try to keep the cost level as low as possible but still at the same time take your risks level down okay few words about sophos mdr so what it's about it's about threat hunting it's about threat detection it's about incident response and this is quite interesting that like five years ago ten years ago we were talking about endpoint protection server protection firewalls and <clears throat> and then world was a little bit simple more simple on those days what nowadays we need to be much more aware we actually need to do the threat hunting like how did someone said said that like either you have been hacked or you just don't know that you have been hacked and that's the thing like why we are doing things called threat hunting so we need to proactively proactively like do the threat hunting stuff that we will actually know if we have already been hacked and obviously, then it's always related, related to the response activities. And of course, it depends a little bit on the case, what type of incident response things we are doing. But anyway, every time when we find something, we need to do some response activities. This Sophos MDR service is based on our former service called MTR. I know it's a little bit confusing. We just changed one letter in the middle, but anyway, so what's the difference between MTR and MDR? The ser service called MTR was always based on Sophos technology. All the customers who are running Sophos MTR service, currently 12,000 customers. So every one of those are also running Sophos endpoint protection. They are running different Sophos technologies. But now with this new release of Sophos MDR, that's not any more mandatory requirement to have Sophos technology there. You, you can run third party technologies there and everything is fully integrated to our MDR platform. And that's really interesting thing. This will change the game for, from our point of view, because obviously we have seen and we are we understand that like maybe our for example, endpoint protection, it's not the best choice for every customer in every situation. It might be that there is some reason that the customer wants to use some other technologies. It might be, for example, some licensing packaging from Microsoft that there is just so good business case to go with Microsoft on endpoint protection. And then it will be like that. Then it's completely fine for us. We will just provide the service layer on top of that. And the service has now been running almost three years already. So basically, it's really, how would I say, mature service in that way. Now we are just changing a little bit the platform to get these third party technologies supported. This is also quite interesting slide about the detection and response times. And like how would I say there's quite big difference when for example this MDR service is doing that comparing that some internal SOC team is doing that we don't have to talk that much about exact minutes or hours or something but usually this is based on the thing that there is not enough resources 
with these internal SOC teams to actually react when something happens. So that is the key reason why it's usually a little bit slower than this type of service. So these persons who are doing this internally, they have so many things ongoing at the same time. So it's just mission impossible to try to react as fast as it could be needed. And then the time is critical here. Like if something starts to happen, like if you are able to react quickly enough, maybe you can basically save the whole environment or maybe you can isolate the threat really quickly. And it's just like attaching few of your laptops or maybe even one instead of that your whole network is down. And typically when these like some serious attacks are happening, so the recovery time is somehow most of the customers have really optimistic ideas that how quickly they are able to recover. So usually we are talking about like month, one month to recover from ransomware attack. So it's not just, how would I say, restoring backups and then everything is okay because you don't know when the actual penetration did happen. So that basically means that with backups, you need to be sure that you know when things start to go wrong, that which version of the back backup you are able to trust, that the, the data is correct. And that's, that's something what usually, how would I say, what often people doesn't get it, that it's not just that like a, today we see something happening, for example, some ransomware, okay, it probably came in today as well. It might came in already three weeks ago. So after restoring your backups, it might pop up again after a few hours and, and then it's like quite tricky situation. So my message here is that it's really important to detect and investigate and remediate these things as quickly as possible. Okay, then a little bit comparison about the MDRs and how to do it. So first, like we have this bring your own technology MDR. And then we have on the other side, the single vendor MDR. And there is obviously some good things and bad things on both of those. What Sophos is trying to do here is that we will get the best of the both worlds. And usually most of the local SOC service providers, they are maybe a little bit more on this bring your own technology side. And that's more flexible. Obviously, you can also have different type of technology, but quite often it doesn't include that much response activities. So it's like a little bit more alerting and guidance type of thing. And then with the single vendor MDR, it's like like our former service called Sophos MTR was example of the single vendor MDR. And then there is always the limitation that if you have just choose some other technologies, so then basically you are not able to use this single vendor MDR and you need to replace those to be, to be able to run it. So how would I say, we are trying to really get the best parts of both and we are giving you the opportunity to choose the technology and we will just provide the service layer on top of that. Okay, a little bit about the integrations. So here you see a lot of familiar logos. There will be plenty of more logos in a few months. So now the official launch for the service is in the end of November. And these are the ones who are on the list from the start. And probably one of the biggest, one of the biggest opportunities here, we see obviously Microsoft and the Palo Alto Fortinet. So they are big players in the cybersecurity market. And we have also quite a lot of customers who have some technology from us and then some technology from Microsoft or Palo Alto or Fortinet. So basically, like our plan is to make this list as long as possible. And now this is the where we start. Then Q1, we will add plenty of more. Q2, it will continue. So uh, I think that we will pretty much cover all the, how would I say, most used technologies in, how would I say, during the next six months or something. 
especially from my point of view, I'm waiting with Secure, Bit Defender, ESET, and the, uh, for example, these three are quite popular in Finland and in Baltic regions. So it would be really great when we get those here. So then we are able to reach even more customers with this solution. Okay, a little bit about the packaging. So Sophos MDR always includes integration to Sophos own technologies like Sophos XDR, firewalls, emails, endpoint protection, and so on. But the, one of the key things here is that Microsoft Graph Security Package is also included free of charge of our MDR licenses and the third party endpoint protection part. So if you are running Microsoft Endpoint, Sophos Firewall, Office 365, so everything is included in the basic package and 90 days data retention time. The amount of data, that's not relevant. We are only calculating the days. And if the 90 days is enough for you, then it's all included. And then add-ons. If you are running some third-party firewalls, for example, then you need this firewall add-on license. Or if you want to get one year data retention instead of 90 days, that's available through, through this add-on price list. And then also, also if you have some other email, network security, cloud stuff, so there is extra license for those. But still, it's relatively simple thing that the basic package includes most of the stuff. So what I think that will be the most most sold package, for example, it's probably the basic stuff with firewall connector. If the customer is running some other firewall than Sophos XGS. So that's then like if we think about email, most of the customers are running Microsoft email protection at the moment. So then it's already covered in the basic package. Okay. Then a little bit about the process. What kind of options or alternatives we have here. So basically it's about your need, how you want to run, run, run the service. So we can work in different ways. So we can, for example, when we see something, we can alert your team about what is happening and then you will take the next steps. Or we can co-manage the threat response together with you. Or if you don't have these people, not at all, or if it's holiday time, night time, whatever, we can completely manage the threat on behalf of you. And you can change these processes from our Sophos Central Management Console. So it's nothing that you need to decide when you start to implement the solution. It's You can change it even for even every day if you want. And then it's also like how far we will go. That is it like full scale incident response or are we like containment? So your team can continue from there or is it just like, like detailed alert? We will tell you what has happened, what you should do. Like the, this is the thing what you need to fix. And also what technology you want to use that's up to you. Is it Sophos technology? Is it something else or is it some kind of combination of these, these two? Obviously, you are interested what the service is doing. So, okay, Paul is saying to me that we need to take the poll on this. Correct. Yes. Okay, let's take the poll before we go to the reporting part. Yes, so I'm launching the poll. So the poll is, uh, let's say, hypothetical. Uh, so uh, in case of, uh, if you would, let's say, would to run Sophos MDR, so which option you would choose? Would you like Sophos just to inform you and you or your partner uh, who is providing the service to you taking care about the remediation actions and response? Uh, would you like us, uh, I mean, not us, but uh, would you like uh, your partner or yourself uh, to co-manage co this response together with Sophos? Or you would like that everything would be done by Sophos? So you just basically get in the report after the fact and when everything is sorted. So yeah, the votes have started. See, so people are voting. So let's, let's wait for uh, up to a minute, let's say so. Yeah, this is also interesting question. Usually the answers, what we get, it's 
changing when the customer are looking more closely the service that like quite often our customers start with really low level Sophos interactions that we will just provide the info, but then when the service is being used a little bit longer time, we are moving towards that we are actually taking the full scale incident response on the behalf of the customer. But let's see, how is your expectation? Yeah, so I believe I will stop the poll because I see majority already voted. So one, two, three, and I'm stopping. So, and please ask here are the results. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so actually 64 percentages choose here to co-manage. And that's actually quite a good way of doing it, especially when you are starting the service. So then you will be always part of the remediation and like you are able to share the information about your own environment that like, Obviously, some things what might look really risky or suspicious or whatever, actually, it might be something that you are just have you have been just using those for years, or there is some specific reason why you need to run a service like this, even though it might include a little bit risk, but still you have like admit that okay this risk we need to take before we are able to for example upgrade this software or buy the newer ver version or something like that so the co-manage part it's it's always really good because then we will have like close connection with you and your team and that basically means that we get better understanding about your environment and i also just maybe add on so i mean just by looking at this result i believe that let's see this nine percent so I would say that those people maybe already have a SOC in place and they just, you know, would use a service as supplementation to this. Yeah, it would exactly. be my wild guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it might be. And, and we are actually working with several SOC service providers with this. And we are just giving more info about customer environment to these SOC service providers. They actually have their own threat hunters and their own analysis and like the people are there but obviously there is a lot of things happening so we can just provide some extra information for them or back them up during holiday times or something like that so that everyone will be all the time protected but yeah then back to the reporting stuff so yeah obviously we are reporting to you that like how the service is going so you will get monthly and weekly reports about what has happened and what we have been doing and so you have like really good visibility and and also you are able to look this so actually from sophos central you have the access on the data lake where we actually collect all the, all this all this telemetry data from your environment and you have the xdr tools available what you can use for queries and correlations for that data so even though we are providing the service even though you have choose the like the that we are working on behalf of you and take care of the incident response activities you still have possibility to look the data by yourself and do your own research and so on. So I think that's quite interesting, actually, if you have just people who are able to do that. So it's always good that you can, like, how do I say, be more aware of what is happening, because that might have big impact of your plans that how you will make your environment more safer in the future. Okay, then a few words about benefits of Sophos MDR. So, of, of course, there is different type of benefits, but like, I especially I like the sleep better thing. <laughs> like every, everyone who is who has been working with IT, it doesn't matter are we talking about like upgrading your VMware to new version or upgrading something or do some difficult migration or or just thinking about the cybersecurity situation in your company. 
So obviously, if things are not in good shape, it's quite hard to sleep. But then when you know that you have done the best what you can, basically, you have like spend your budget wisely, you have choose right technologies, there is skillful people running those technologies, there is someone watching after you 24-7, 365 days per year, obviously, then you are able to sleep better. So I think that's quite quite good example of the thing. Like, of course, we can talk about that you have put your focus on growing your business instead of taking care of cybersecurity. But that's like different discussion. I like it, keep it simple. So so sleep better. So the, that, that, that's the good statement. Then one slide about the Carter. So this is based on the MTR service, what I mentioned before, which has been now running three years. So really happy customers with that. 97% of those will, would recommend the service. So that's quite high level. And this is public information. You can Google Carter Peer Insights, and then you can compare different vendors who are providing these type of services. And let's see, it's really interesting to see now when we are able to launch the Sophos MDR in two weeks that what will happen with these numbers, because I think that we will go even higher and especially we will get more reviews and more comments. So there is a good information when you start to read those customer comments that what they did like on the service, what they didn't like on the service. So it's really good knowledge about when you start to consider these services. So what other people have found out easy and difficult and good and bad. So I definitely recommend that go to Carter period sites and just list, read read few of those comments from different vendors so you get a little bit better understanding about the topic. Okay, how it's licensed it. So basically there is two key things, how many employees, how many servers. And then we are just deciding how long we want to keep the data. I think most of the customers, the 90 days is enough, but there is always customers who want to have longer period. There might be some regulation related on that, that you need to have it longer than 90 days. So then you just add the package. And then there is a few different versions, MDR complete, Sophos MDR and Sophos Threat Advisor. Basically, shortly about this different package. So MDR complete is the one what we are obviously recommending to everyone. That's the full scale package. Threat advisor is planned for the, that type of customer who are, who are already running their own SOC. They already have the SOC in place. They just need a little bit more telemetry information, a little bit like extra eyes to look after their environment. So the threat, threat advisor is then the right choice. And so for MDR is there in the middle. And then what integrations we are needing, are the Sophos integration enough, or do we need to have some firewall, email, network, identity, public cloud? The third party endpoint is included in the price, so it's a little bit unclear presented in this slide, but it's included in those MDR complete and Sophos MDR packages. And then my last slide is about Sophos rapid response. And this is really nice service. This is like perfect service when you need it. And like most of our customers, even our business partners doesn't all know that we have this type of service. But whenever you are under attack, it doesn't matter are you a Sophos customer or not. You can, when, whenever you need help, so just Google Sophos rapid response or go to sophos.com, you will find that find the solution there and there's the button get immediate help and and what that means basically is that we have this incident response teams working 24 7 and they will immediately start to help you <clears throat> there's fixed price for this service which is depending on the size of your company but you will get the pricing before before they start to work and then, like I said, it's fixed pricing. So even though the incident would be really difficult to solve, it would take a lot of time. So it doesn't, the price doesn't go up, it's fixed price. 
And after we have done this, then basically, then basically we will still continue to monitor your environment 45 days just to be sure that nothing will pop up again. So basically we will do the whole remediation incident response activities. And when everything is fixed, we will continue to monitor your, monitor your environment after that. So keep this in mind. You will find it from sofas.com. You can always contact Hermitage. If you need this type of services, you will get the price before we start to work. But usually these cases are going like that, that you contact us, we will provide the pricing and we will start to work with you in like in a few hours. So this is like, it's really rapid response. That's all, of, all what it's about. So we will start to take immediate actions for your environment and cleaning up and trying to get your services up and running. But that was my last slide. So thank you for that. And then I think that we will have some time for some questions. Yes, correct. So I'm coming back to, to our virtual stage. I will stop the sharing the screen. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so there were some questions coming in. Maybe more will come out because I will start this conversation uh, going uh, with my discussion. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, one of the kind of, uh, once we started discussing to the market, both with the partners and with some end customers about Sophos MDR, where we kind of get the question very usually. So, how Sophos MDR is uh, compares to SOC as a service? Is it the same? Is it different? Mm -hmm. So, the, those con yeah. The con concepts. Yeah. Good question. So basically, obviously it depends a little bit that how big the customer is and also how big the SOC as a service, like the service provider is. So there is a big difference if we take, for example, some local local service provider from Vilnius and then we compare them to some global level mm -hmm. SOC service provider. So naturally there is differences. But I would say that most of the differences is coming the way of they are working. Like usually SOC as a service is built around CM. You are able to customize things quite a lot. You can bring your own technology. Everything is connected to CM. And there is a quite big project from the beginning mm -hmm. to get everything up and running. Mm -hmm. And and then if you think about the MDR service, it's much more like out from the box. Okay. Also, there might be that there are some services like which are local SOC service providers might offer, like it can be whatever security related that will be part of the service. Our MDR, it's focusing on the network, endpoints, servers, cloud, email, like it's quite, how would I say, restricting that what we are focusing mm -hmm. and it's coming from the security point of view mm -hmm. much more than like for example compliance point of view so SOC service providers can also offer a little bit more like compliance point of view things. Okay. Okay. So I think eventually it boils down to the actual customer needs and the yeah. size and maturity of the customer yeah. most likely. I mean, exactly so. exactly and and typically it's more cost efficient way to go with the MDR. Mm -hmm. It's like out of the box, like I said. So it's like, if you are like having the security focus, you want to do it cost efficient way, raise the bar for your security level. So I would definitely recommend the MDR. Okay, okay, thank you. So I hope it answers the question. Okay, so I'll take one question from the crowd. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so basically customers saying they, are, they have SIM in place. Yeah. So the question is, so maybe, yeah, it's, it's good diversion from what we just discussed, but the question is, uh, so uh, they have a team which is monitoring that, but how Sophos could maybe supplement that? What would be yeah. the recommendation? So yeah, that's good. Advantages? Good question as well, because there is plenty of CM installation already running and also coming. So like, for example, Microsoft Sentinel, which is at the moment really big topic everywhere. So we have already out from the box integration from Sophos Central to Microsoft Sentinel. So then if you have already done your integrations to Microsoft Sentinel, you are collecting their information from different sources. So you can also connect the data what we are having and bring that to Microsoft Sentinel. So it's like, we are like 
how would I say, just providing additional information for that. So mm -hmm. we can work together with Microsoft Sentinel. That's, mm -hmm. And then customer has like single point of class, like maybe a little bit more mm -hmm. true there. Sentinel, mm -hmm. and there might be data that we are not using in the MDR. So for example, if you want to take from your network switches, okay. the data to Sentinel, so then you can use both. It's yeah. like, so yeah, it's kind of a bigger visibility. Let's yeah, say. yeah, exactly. And exactly. also maybe it, it wasn't mentioned, but uh, in case customer is running it eight by five only normal working mm -hmm. hours, so Sophos team basically yeah. take care about the night and weekends. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's important because the mm -hmm. acts usually happen during the nights and the weekends. Yeah. Not during the world. And still quite often what I see with Microsoft Sentinel is that the project has started, customer has made the decision to go with Sentinel. But then during the project, they realize that this is not so easy. This is actually quite time consuming. So like the Sentinel implementation might be, you know, quite often it's in mm -hmm. that phase that it will collect the data, but it's not doing that much for the data. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it, it needs a time to put the Sentinel up and running. It's nice system, I don't say that, mm -hmm. but like mm -hmm. usually, Quite often, it's it's described it a little bit easier than it actually is. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, since we touched a bit of this, you know, complexity and stuff. So there's also always question about the money investments needed. Yeah. So yeah. So can you make a comment on that? About yeah. So the... Yeah. Ex exactly. So what I like with the MDR service is that you don't have to make that big implementation project. Project. So. So that's like the easy part. The integration with third party technologies, they are already done. They are publicly available. It's really like short videos that what you should do, really easy stuff. It will take a few minutes. Then, okay, it might be that you need to, for example, deploy XDR sensors, but still we are doing really light level project comparing to take like SOC as a service mm -hmm. for you. So, so there is not that type of thing. And if Customer wants to work with some of our MSP partners, so service providers who are using our MDR services. So then you can even buy that with monthly payment and like pay pay per usage. Mm -hmm. So then you don't have to invest anything. You are just mm -hmm. like buying it monthly, mm -hmm. monthly, and you can use the service like like three months, one month, two months, whatever. Like but you don't have to invest like 36 mm -hmm. months upfront mm -hmm. and you don't have to make any long contract. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's basically a lot of things about launching of the service and the cost mm -hmm. of the launch, I believe. Yeah. This, this would be the key. Exactly. And of course, most likely to, to understand exactly. So we need to look in the actual situations and make the calculations. So yeah, exactly. Licenses yeah. Needed, the integrations needed and so on. But what I like is that the flexibility that like we really believe our service so like if you are want to use our service take the service in use and if you are not happy you are mm -hmm. free to go yeah so i think that's the right way to approach it instead of doing like 36 months agreement and mm -hmm. you are not able to change the service provider during the contract period mm -hmm. so but with our msp partners you are able to do that like whenever you want mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I, I see one more question. So it's a bit what related to what we just discussed. discussed. Uh, so uh, yeah, the question is, so why should I go with Sofa there instead of building my own SOC? So yeah, you kind of discussed it. Yeah, maybe yeah, more yeah, to... yeah no, maybe a little bit to wrap up that like, it's how would I say, if you start to build your own SOC, you need to invest on the technology, then you need to invest on the people, and the realistic timeline to get the service up and running, mm -hmm. we are like talking more or less like one year when you have everything implemented and you have found the team to run it. So then if we start to talk about the MDR service, like you are up, you have the service up and running in like a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's like a, maybe the biggest thing that why. And also I think the cost efficient efficiency is one of the key things that like, if you just a little bit think about the think about the focus what you are having so if it's like security related so then it's like you can pretty much complete mm -hmm. those things what you want to mm -hmm. go with mdr and mm -hmm. yeah and also there are so first of all it's like an initial investment so one mm -hmm. thing 
people, technologies, and so on. Another thing also later on, the total cost of ownership, because in this kind of climate, uh, the human resource question is very kind of critical. Mm -hmm. So people are, you know, leaving, coming back, yeah. you need to again invest in new people which come in. So it's a lot of headache, in, in my opinion. Yeah. So it, it really has to be a big business case for the company to have something on their own. But again, mm -hmm. this is yeah. yeah. And obviously, like if you start with MDR, it doesn't prevent you building your own SOC service yeah. at the same time. So basically, when you find the first car guys or girls to run the service, this MDR service will like back up them mm -hmm. and you like and then you can like piece by piece develop transition. yeah yeah like make the transition to your own search service and maybe then you are just buying for example the lowest package from from us the threat, mm -hmm. threat advisory package mm -hmm. so there's okay. plenty of alternatives makes sense yeah so yeah so i will i would encourage everyone to just get back to us if you find this topic interest i don't see any more questions so i believe we can conclude the session uh, so we hope that this webinar was uh, useful for, for those who attended. Uh -huh. Yeah, just one more question popped up. What is the timeline of the deploying MDR service from making decisions to the start of monitoring our infrastructure? So I don't. Yeah, the timeline. Are there any average timelines yeah. available? No, basically, the timeline is actually like if there is like Sophos technology in place. So then basically, the most of the time is actually going to before we get the PO <laughs> to run from customer to partner to distributor to us. That's usually day or two. Mm -hmm. And then when we have processed the order, the MDR team will contact the customer straight after that, and then they can start to implement the mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. The actual implementation will start that the customer, they will do health check for your environment, and then you will get some proposal list for things what you need to fix before the actual service will be running. So usually it's some kind of misconfigurations. It might, might be some vulnerable, like not patched servers or something like that. So we will do the health check and then we will provide the list of things what we need to fix that we see big risks that mm -hmm. the breach will start here. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, we are just talking days mm -hmm. anyway here. Okay. So, so it's not a big thing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, no more questions coming in. So yeah, to finish up. So <laughs> thank you again for those who participated. I hope it was useful. If you didn't manage to ask question or was were shy uh, or didn't want to be it answered publicly, so you can always come back to us at Termitar Solutions. We will ha help you with all the questions available. If we want to know the answers, we will ask Yaska from Sophos or any Sophos other specialist. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Yaska. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you from my side as well. It was a pleasure to share the story. Yeah, and have a nice day, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah.